Oh, All right, well, welcome to episode three of The Late Shifts. Uh, I'm Dan. This is Cam. Thank you, yes. Um, we're doing this uh, in a new location, and by that I mean I'm using a different recording device, and Cam yeah. is in a different state. So Yeah, I'm in Atlanta, which is not a state. I'm in Georgia. How is Atlanta, Georgia? It's hot. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's also on the East Coast. And that's not great. Do you feel closer to the Giants? Can you feel their, their undefeated spirit resonating? Am I, closer, am I closer to New York from Atlanta? Uh, I'm pro- You know what? I probably am. Yeah. I'm sure I probably am. Uh, let's ask the internet. Atlanta to New Jersey. Uh, Google Maps says. Uh, 14 hours and 30 minutes. So Okay, yeah, there's no way I'd get to New Jersey in 14 hours from Minneapolis. So yeah, no, definitely. It's like 20. So I'm pretty sure it's more than that, isn't it? I don't think so. Let's see. Because it's like, it's like 14 hours to get to like Michigan and then you still have to drive through like all of Pennsylvania. Yeah, 19 hours and two minutes. Okay. Because you you go under Michigan, so you miss all that nonsense. Oh, I suppose. Okay. But if you go through Chicago, that adds like potentially two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending what time you're going, you have a two to four hour difference. Yeah, but like you can still get like stopped traffic at midnight in Chicago. This is true. I don't know how rare it is, but I know it's happened because I've been in it. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's jump into this week. Um, We're going to do things, uh, you know, a little differently because I think we're going to add a little segment where you talk a little bit about your uh, D&D campaign. But before yeah, we get so to that. Yeah, so release, uh, you can stay tuned for that. Yes, yes. But let's get down to business here. Oh, uh, we yeah, entered, important stuff first. We entered this week 0-1, uh, yeah. devastating loss by like 60. Um, yeah. And this week started off fairly okay, you know. Uh, I'll read you the little recap here. Um, it looks like I began with uh, Christian McCaffrey getting more touches than last week. So that's good. I did see he didn't get any touchdowns, which is unfortunate. He did not. He Well, Baker Mayfield doesn't really believe in Christian McCaffrey. I don't think. Does, like does Baker Mayfield believe in being a quarterback? I'm I don't think sure Baker does. believes in anything. <laughs> but uh yeah let's let's look at what happened here so um baker and mr mccaffrey you know christian mccaffrey still managed 100 rushing yards but okay so he, receptions he got about the same amount of points then right like 13 14 yeah he had 14.8 okay and so like that's fine. It's not Christian McCaffrey, but it's fine. It's also way better than what Jonathan Taylor did this week. That is true. They looked so bad. Uh, How? We will get we will get to that when we get to um the defense pickup for this week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't understand how he had four receptions. Like throw him the ball. He's always open. So anyway. Um, so that was fine i started elijah moore and somehow in a 31 point game he only caught what three receptions for 41 yards whereas garrett wilson had 14 targets two touchdowns infinity points so you uh, you can't plan on what the jets are going to do no but in two weeks Joe Flacco has made love eyes toward Garrett Wilson. Uh, so I'm just saying you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. So no. 
no. It is what it is, I guess. Yep. I well, we'll get to that. Um, so between those two, I wasn't feeling great. And mm-hmm. then Kyle Pitts had the exact same stat line as last week. I think he's allowed to get 19 <laughs> yards and two receptions. So he's allowed to get. So really good third round pick. I, I love Arthur Smith. That it makes no sense to me. He's so good. I love that Arthur Smith said when asked about how many targets Pitts was getting, he said, Listen, we're just trying to win games. We're not trying to win fantasy football. And everyone's response is, you know, fantasy football is based on stats which help you win games. And he's your best player. Right. I guess he's decided to use him as a decoy. Like you know, that's what they did with Megatron, you know, with Antonio Brown, with all the really good players. Just decoy yeah, them up. That that's what the Saints did with Jimmy Graham. Remember? Like Jimmy Graham, who is kind of a similar body type to Kyle Pitts yeah. and like in terms of overall ability. You and know, the Saints just decoyed him the whole time. You know, he's like kind of covered i think you know he i mean he's six what six and the cornerbacks are like five eleven so i don't know how he's possibly going to get the ball i can't can't think of it i he can't there's there's no way you just i mean if only there was a way to make the ball go up high well now that wouldn't be fair to the deep i mean that that would literally be cheating yeah yeah you can't do that but like if there was a way to like elevate the ball like over the defender like i know you can't do that yep. but like how good would he be if you could do that we shouldn't talk anymore i'm going to cry on the outside okay. and not That's just true. on the inside yep. but we'll come back to Kyle Pitts when we talk about waivers again but uh the other heartbreaking thing was the entire Chicago Bears offense. And Darnell Mooney, who now um, added one reception for negative four yards. So um, he's yep. not gonna he's not gonna be on my team anymore. Uh, yep. I... I I'm changing my team name once I drop him to Return from whence you came. <laughs> you so. could you could rename it Darn It. <laughs> Darn it, Mooney. <laughs> yeah. That's good too. That's good. All right. Well, uh, in spite of those failures and uh Cade York, my rookie sensation kicker missing an extra point. Um <laughs> Does he get was, nine points for misses? Yeah, minus one. Oh, okay. That's it's not that's, not right. huge, but it's a two point swing. Yeah, yeah. And so, in spite of that, I broke a hundred points, and I had a chance to win going into Monday Night Football. Uh, because Carson Wentz put up a solid, sweet tasty 33.78 points i'm just saying he's he was playing detroit and i know some of that was in garbage time hey but guess what he's got the points that's fine because he threw a touchdown and a two-point conversion to dahan johnson so yep i mean jahan dotson (laughs) not Um, dahan johnson yeah the the dotson johnson um and that made me feel better about uh, benching Rashad Bateman, um, although he did I mean, score the most the most points of any wide receiver on my team. Well, the good news is is that now you know to play Bateman. That's true. Until next week, when this is not how it happens. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, anyway, so between Wentz, Dotson. And, you know, the rest of my team doing fine. Um, I was over 100 points, hoping and praying there's a chance that I think, let's see, if I look at 
my chart Sunday night, it was 64.8 to 100.28. And he had uh, Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, and Minnesota's defense. Which, going into Sunday, or going into Monday night, I was like, well, it's over. I can't. Between, like, Kirk Cousins could throw for 30 on his own. And if he throws anything to Dalvin Cook, it's just double dipping. And defenses always get like 15 points. So, um, oh, and yeah, so, that's right. The defense is crazy points in this. Yeah, Forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Devin Duvernay returned a uh, 100 yard touchdown mm-hmm. and got points for every return yard and the touchdown. And then the defense also gets points for every return yard and every touchdown. So if you have him on your team and the defense, you can double dip. Crazy. You didn't tell me that. So I play uh, Devin DuVernay next week, so it's going to be really fun when he outscores Rashad Bateman again because of return yard. Anyway. Uh, Yep, just standard scoring. Yeah, totally normal. Uh, So going into last night, or yeah, last night, uh, I was like, I probably can't win, but I'll watch just to see. And when it gets out of hand, I'll give up. And somehow the Vikings played so bad that I had to watch the whole game because they kept like getting close, but not delivering on anything. And then like they get close and then Kirk would throw an interception. And so the game uh, ended in that last moment. With just enough for me to pull out a victory. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And somehow, Kirk Cousins. What'd you say? Oh, I just said I'm glad the Vikings loss was worth something. Oh, it was so painful to watch. Like, And that's why I didn't watch. Well, I turned it off after. I I I didn't make it to halftime. Because I was on the East Coast, as I am right now. I was tired, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to bed, and I'm going to go to sleep. And you know what? We beat the Packers last week. I'm okay with this. Yep. If he had started Aaron Rodgers, it would have been a different story. But yeah, Kirk Cousins. So, anyway, yeah, that was painful to watch. That's enough said. On to a new week. Um, Sounds good to me. So... The new week, here's the deal. Trey Lance fractures his ankle out for the season. Brutal. Like, ugh. It's just Good thing terrible. you picked up that quarterback. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's let's talk about it here. So, yeah. as you can see, I have an open spot here. And then I have to decide what else I want to do. I definitely don't want Denver versus San Francisco with – no offense to Trey Lance, but a competent quarterback uh, now at the helm who, you know, may not be super competent. At times. Yeah. I'm more afraid of him than some other people. So, okay. um, so I don't think I want to play Denver. Also because Denver's kind of been poo-poo garbage. They like, struggled to beat Houston. Yeah. And- that's not good. Nope. No, it's not. So um, I, I'm going to swap them out. I'm certainly going to swap out Trey Lance. And yep. we already talked about Darnell Mooney. So I have three open roster spots. Look at you. I know. We thought we'd have none. So here's <laughs> well, what I'm thinking. Tell me your thoughts. Yeah. One, um, Garrett Wilson, if I can pick him up, and, and not drop Elijah Moore. I can see how this plays out a little more, but maybe keep the train rolling. If they're going to throw 50 times every game, then it doesn't matter if they're good or not. They're going to deliver. It seems like that's what Joe Flacco wants to do. And at this point, like, why would they not just roll with that? No. What I'm imagining is they'll roll with that till like the bye week, and then Brees Hall will come online, and I can 
transfer the points to Brees Hall. That's my hope, at least. Okay. So, Garrett Wilson for Mooney. I'm already dropping Trey Lance. Yeah. I kind of feel like picking up another tight end just to have one, just in case Kyle Pitts doesn't change another two weeks. I'd rather have somebody. Um, yeah. Like, I'm not going to drop him. I'm not going to trade no. him. No. But I don't have to play him. I mean, I'm going to. But yes. But I don't know. So that's an option. The other option would be to pick up Jared Goff so I can stream the Lions and the Commanders against the better matchup for the rest of my life. And the Lions are, both of those teams are going to have to throw the ball. Uh Uh-huh. They both have a lot of receiving talent, very interesting quarterback rooms, and no defense. Yep. And so, like, accurate statement. This coming week, Wentz at Philly. Don't feel great about it. I don't like that. So, if I were to pick up Jared... Jared Goffrey, he's against Minnesota. We like Minnesota. (laughs) At least more than Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, it pains me to say it, but yes, I would go with Goff over Wentz. But that means I'm not picking up a tight end. I'm just rolling with Kyle. It doesn't hurt me. Who are they playing next week? Seattle. So you'd think they, you know, oil the squeaky wheel. And Seattle's defense weak link is supposed to be the secondary. So the problem is Kyle Pitts has to beat the secondary Arthur Smith and Marcus Mariota. See, I, he can beat the secondary. I feel like he can beat Marcus Mariota because Marcus Mariota can at least throw some dump off passes. That'll work. The coach, I'm not, I don't know. If you watch the film, it's just painful because Mariota doesn't even look at his side of the field because he's looking for Drake London. I don't know if that's a coach decision or Marcus being like, I only trust Drake. Drake's my boy. It just doesn't make any sense. No, I I don't think it can continue. At some point, they're going to throw him the ball. Maybe? Hear me out on this. Does Mariota know that Pitts is on his team? I think... I think Mariota might be afraid of him. Like, he right. looks at him and he gets scared because he's so he's like, big. Oh, that's a big guy. I can't throw it near him. If I don't throw it right, he'll eat me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. here's what the waiver wire looks like. And this is why I'm concerned, right? If I were to drop or not play Pitts, I feel good about one and a half of these guys. <laughs> like, Gerald Everett has gotten four and ten targets. Yeah. So, like, I feel good about him because of his quarterback. But his quarterback is also broken in half right now. So, like, maybe I don't feel as good. Yeah. So, the question I'm asking, give me advice. Is golf greater than sign Everett? Well, the problem is, is that I don't think you can roll Wentz against Philly right now. Um, And who's Atlanta playing? Seattle. Oh, yeah, that's right. We talked about that. I feel, is it in Seattle? Uh, At Seattle. Oh. But Seattle's given the eighth most points to the tight end position. In two games, sir. Super you know great. 
sample size. Yeah. Cause I know I know Russell Wilson was targeting his tight end. Maybe you know what? I think pick up an off pick up a quarterback, roll pits for another week. Yeah. And then if he's a dud again, then we can look at the waiver wire and see what we've got. Yeah, so I'm going to change my priority here. So worst case scenario, if someone picks up Goff, I'll still get Jared Everett. Because, yeah. like, I'm not really feeling great about the options at quarterback beyond him. Like, yeah. Joe Flacco at Cincy? Can he do it again? Since he hasn't been good. Like, just... <laughs> oh my goodness. So maybe I'm not well, doing the Mariota on. stack. Hear me out on this because you have some jets. Maybe you need to go all in. <laughs> if okay, if if Zach Wilson was out for the whole season, I'd be very tempted. I mean, how many more weeks is he out? Probably one, maybe two. Okay. But is he going to come back against Green Bay, Miami? Those are horrible. They will put him in against Green Bay because that'll give Green Bay the best chance to win. It's true. It's true. Um. Okay, so I still feel better about Jared Goff. Yeah. And so if it doesn't go through, I'll just pick up Mariota. And if that doesn't, or uh, not Mariota, Flacco. And if that doesn't yeah. work, you know, there's always yeah. the best option. That's right. Very best option. <laughs> okay. Um, Perfect. I'm glad we have that settled. <laughs> you feel good about that? I feel great. Well, then, then you'd have a giant. That's true. Okay, so um yeah, other than those guys, like I don't think there's really anyone else I care about on the waiver wire. We talked about Damian Harris. He had a good game, but like, you know, Blark. Um Yeah. I'm kind of like rolling with my two all-star running backs. And when Brian comes off, we'll figure that out. Yeah. If that doesn't work, I'm probably not going to win anyway. Um, and you know what, Dan? That is okay. But that's why we're that, doing this, to make it okay. So that We're just, it's just for fun. Also, we're geniuses and need everyone to know by our decisions. Yeah, and that's why I quit having teams. <laughs> so wise okay um so yeah we're picking up garrett wilson picking up jared goff yeah uh defense this is the toughie Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of good options and a lot of teams i think are bad but are they like we've got the Chargers at Jacksonville. No, at home versus Jacksonville. You'd think that's good. Mm-hmm. But Jacksonville gives up the fourth fewest fantasy points to the defense position this year. And that's probably because they blanked Indianapolis. What is happening? I have no idea what happened there. Uh, uh, it, it, but I don't know. Washington, I mean, their defense is a dumpster fire. They've got a great line, and they have no one after that. I don't think they even put corners out there. I think the corners just sit and pull grass. Mm -hmm. I think what they did is they put up, like, cardboard cutouts, (laughs) because those are cheaper than real players. Just of Carson Wentz. (laughs) Oh, man. 
they have like assistants running around like carrying the cardboard cutouts just being that nobody runs into them uh, so uh, this is one i don't know if the jets i mean the the jacksonville jaguars are a good matchup or not i don't i don't know so you think <laughs> that's the best option yeah there's also the chicago bears at houston they've done well interesting or yeah. there's my personal favorite the dallas cowboys at the new york giants now dallas dallas is not great they lost a really important thing called the quarterback but yeah. their defense has been pretty good Michael Parsons is like five people. I heard someone say he's the best defensive player besides Aaron Donald in the NFL. So, like, they had six sacks against Joe Burrows. Yeah. So. And you I, know. Uh, I, yeah, that is the problem because they don't have. They're just, I don't know what their offense can really do. I don't know either, but it is the Giants. Yeah. We have beaten by the skin of our nose the Tennessee Titans, mm -hmm. who look like they got one of their arms cut off because they did. And uh, the Panthers with Baker Mayfield, aforementioned, doesn't believe in anything. And Ben McAdoo is calling games, plays. That sure. is not good. Yeah. So that's interesting. And then you know, I think because you're a Giants fan, I think you need to pick up Dallas because then either way you win. I'll consider it. I'll consider it. And you could double win if it's a low scoring game that the Giants win. Uh huh. Uh huh. Which realistically is probably the only way they win the game. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I just don't know if I can do it like physically click the buttons to add Dallas to my team. I don't know if my brain, my spirit will allow me. Okay. So let's look at the other options. Yeah. There's also Kansas City at Indianapolis. Now the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> <laughs> held them to zero points, five sacks. Three interceptions. Yeah. Houston honestly didn't do that bad. Two sacks and interception of fumble. Well, they gained a bajillion yards against Houston. That's true. So the yards I have don't matter. No idea how that how Indianapolis didn't win that game. I don't know. But yeah, I mean maybe, maybe. I think if Michael Pittman is out. This is a home run because they don't know how to play football without Michael Pittman. So interesting. Yeah. Um, then there's where are they? Uh, I mean, there's New Orleans at Carolina, also interesting, but though no, this one. Philadelphia at Washington. We just talked about how we don't want Carson Wentz to play Philadelphia. What if we could have Carson Wentz play our Philadelphia? Again, painful for me to pick up the Eagles, but Charlie's favorite team is the Eagles. So, how did that happen? Uh, we we were talking about who wins which game, and she picked the Eagles, and then she goes, "I like the Eagles. Go Giants." Go Broncos, go Eagles. And I went, what? <laughs> well, at least she's got a Super Bowl chance. And then she started doing this. Fly, Eagles, fly. And a part of me died. 
<laughs> I wasn't going to say this. Like, because I'm not saying it because of the game yesterday. But one of the reasons why it was easier for me to turn off the TV was because then I didn't have to see any Philadelphia fans. Oh, they're the worst. They are the worst. They are scientifically and objectively the worst fans in the world in any sport. Specifically to other people. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I'm saying, like, I'm saying they're the worst fans in any sport that they choose to support. Yeah. Like, not yeah. comparing them to other, no, they're just whatever sport they are cheering for, they are the worst. Yep. Yep. So, good job, Philadelphia. Yep. So, I. They looked dominant. Darius Slay literally has a figurine of Kirk Cousins that he carries around in his pocket because he owns him. <laughs> Can he do that to Carson Wentz? I think you might be able to do this, Carson Wentz. I, I think you need to make that. Make, you need to pick that up. You need to make that happen. Now, they didn't do great against Jared Goff. But we already said that Detroit has a very good offense and a terrible defense. Right, but that's the same argument for Washington. But I think Detroit's offense is much better than Washington's offense. Maybe. Which just played out. But that's fair. That's fair. So I, I guess boiling down to it, do we feel better about Philadelphia than the Chargers or Kansas City? I Okay. I still think Dallas is the play just because I think that's going to be a low-scoring game regardless. But if if you're against playing them, then I would go. I I would go. Kansas City if Pittman is out, like you said, and Philadelphia otherwise. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what the experts think. Just for you know kicks and giggles but that i've been like trying to figure out all day which defense to get yep. i was about as useful as a poopy flavored lollipop trying to work today and that's a very good use of your time i uh -huh. approve uh-huh i felt great about it finally just gave up went for a walk and then i can work again but there you uh, go. So according to the internet, uh, I won this week. Stop it. First of all, we don't believe in kickers. My kicker's obviously the best. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Kickers only miss like field goals and extra points. Perfect. That's what I want. Um, they would say, oh, Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Mm okay. This is going to be real hard for me. <laughs> Close. Close. It's okay, you can do it. <laughs> oh. 
Also, how ancient does it feel to like change waiver priority by clicking little drop downs, like get a new system? Okay. I I think we're almost done here. Last uh, order of business is starts for next week, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got Wentz in there now. The hope is that he turns into Jared Goff. Yep. Um. Rashad Bateman, you know, New York, not or New York, New England, not the best, but mm -hmm. whatever. I still think you got to roll him. He's been awesome. So, um, these two are locks. He's a uh, lock. We'll um, give him another week. So, it's really wide receiver and flex. Right now, I have Brandon Ayuk in. Um, he had eight targets against Seattle. I think he's going to have some action. So I'm going to roll with him, I think. Well, and, then, and in looking at your bench, I mean, who would you play over him? Well, I'm going to be getting Garrett Wilson. So I could drop Garrett Wilson. That, so. Well, but wouldn't, wouldn't he be better to play than Hall? So this is going to be the spot that I'm in. Which Jet am I starting? I'm playing Jet Roulette. Yep. Jet? Am I going to regret my Jet Roulette? I haven't yes. yet. <laughs> There's only one way that that goes, and that is regret. Yep. Well... Right now, I put Brees Hall in there because I didn't want to make a decision. It's probably Elijah Moore. Yeah. I can't imagine he doesn't become the squeaky wheel. But if I get Garrett Wilson, I'm going to try to play him. I'm going to chase the points. Chase those points. Chase those points. Okay. The the lowest ranked person is the actual person I think might have the biggest week, and that's Traylon Burks. He's hasn't played any snaps. He's at like 30% of snaps. But he's getting he's the most he's a 37% target share on their team. They have no one else. Like he's gonna score touchdown. This they've put up yeah. points. It's gonna happen. He he looked decent at times against Buffalo, and Buffalo's yeah. got good defense. I, that's what I'm saying. So it it'd be stupid to start him. Be dumb. It's not what I should do. But I'm starting. <laughs> So I'll I'll pick that. You should also watch what his coach says about him. He's what's his name on the Titans? It's just the worst coach. Oh, that Vrabel guy. Yeah, what is what's his name? Mike Vrabel. Yeah. He like reams out his good players that produce and then says good things about the bad players. So someone says something about Trey Lambert, he goes, Yeah, you know. <sighs> We we really just need to see some more out of him, you know. He's got to push into some of that contact and like, uh, you know, he's he's getting there, making progress. But and it's like, dude, he led your team in receiving, and then you took him out of the game. Like, what, what, what are you doing? But at least they have Malik Willis because he looked great. Not that anyone would against Buffalo, but. Well, I, I think of I, I again I only watched the first half because then I switched over yeah. to the Vikings game and then I turned that off. But Traylon Burks looked the best of anyone against Buffalo's defense. He yeah. was consistently getting open downfield and finding like soft spots and so Yep. I, I agree. Know. That's so, just what I saw. You know, for now we're just gonna do that. Just okay. For, just for now. I'm it's not going to stay. 
But you know what you should do? Because you're getting close to it. Make your entire bench Jets. <laughs> <laughs> then deciding who to play is easy. I mean, if I get um, Wilson, it'll be Jets and Commanders. Who would have thought? Oh. Anyway, I don't know if I have anything else to report. I should probably drop Cade York for any real kicker, but I'm not. Yeah, but we know you're not going to do that. I want to give him another shot in the rain. <laughs> Bad idea. That just means it's raining now, right? Yeah, sure. Cool, cool. I don't know how that works. <laughs> We'll see if I have. I'm doing like a hundred waiver claims. If I, I only get five a week, so I might run out. <laughs> Running out of waiver claims. All right, really fast before we um move on to the D and D segment. Yes. Uh, I just want to do a quick. Let's make fun of decisions people in this league are making, in a respectful, kind way. Mm-hmm. But like, first of all. 182 points is insane. And it's all from Tampa Bay. (laughs) Look at this. Six sacks at two for three interceptions, two fumble recoveries, a touchdown. That's insane. That's ridiculous. Um, I hate that Zach Ertz still produces points. Makes me so angry that he quadrupled my Or whatever. Yep. Um, but Waddle, that game, that I don't want to talk about it. Okay, wait, did that guy play Dalton Schultz? This guy? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. I don't have anything more to say on that. Okay. We'll move on. Um, (laughs) but he also had Drake London on his bench. So I officially that's the other guy. Just despise this team because he has the guy that's killing Kyle Pitts. Oh, and yeah. He has Zach Ertz. Oh, that's what you were referencing. And My his bad. team is good. Everything makes me angry. Yeah. So there's that. Um, what else here? Um, oh, this this makes me sad. Like, I thought this team was good to start the year. But poor go-getters are just on the struggle bus. <sighs> Brady, nothing. Justin Jefferson, ugh. Judy, out. Kareem Hunt is yeah. fine. Elliot Payne. Thomas is fine. Carlson's good, but what are you supposed to do against Christian Kirk, man? Mike Mike Thomas or Mike Williams. Yeah. So there's that. Um, notice this right here. Two receptions. That's hey. right. Two receptions and he managed zero yards. No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say how many yards. <laughs> he he went in for like six plays and his hamstring tightened up, so they took him out. The man is a rubber band wound too tight. Yeah, you can't you can't trade for him. I want it so bad. Well, just. Um, just wait for him to be dropped, and then you can pick him up for free. Yeah, but with who? Who am I going to drop? It's impossible. Um, this we should have known. Amon Ra, we should have known. Mm-hmm. So that's going to pain me all year. That like, this is this is my dynasty team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aaron Jones, Amon Ra, Josh Allen. I should have known. It's my fault. Yeah. Um. What else is there? Anything here? Nothing really else to show here. Um. Yep. Uh, Allen. Rock, I knew he was gonna have a game. He almost had two touchdowns. So, hey, look at that. It's a thing. Uh, there's one more thing somewhere here though. Let's see. Um, Jalen Hurts. I. He's gonna be amazing. This. This. I. It's fifty points. I, yep, and I slagged that off at the beginning. That is half of the points that my team scored <laughs> this week. Yep, and I do believe I said you can't take Jackson before yep. I, I believe. 
if I remember. Yep, that's aged really well. Uh huh. Good job. We're, we're super good at this. Uh, yep, so. there's you know, definitely another reason why I'm not playing anymore. Yep, yep. But that's why I take your advice on everything because, uh, you know, you got to be right sometime. <laughs> All right, last one. Um, I just, losing with style, he didn't deserve this win, but he got it because of this. 108 mm -hmm. return words. Mm -hmm. Extra five points. And he got minus points from Miami. That's solid. <laughs> Good job there. 35 plus points. They got no turnovers, no sacks, nothing. He's playing Taysom Hill? Yes. Taysom's his tight end. That was, that was the thing I knew would make it. Look at this, though, on his bench. Tua. 50 <laughs> points. Six passing touchdowns. <laughs> 469 yeah. yards. <laughs> so he scored less than 100 and left 50 points on the table. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be fair, he has Mahomes. So it's not like he made the wrong choice. Right. You can't yeah. bench Mahomes. Well, I mean, no, he, he definitely did make the wrong choice. It's okay. just, it's hard to figure that one. But like, what is, what is Jaden Iceberg doing? Why is he playing Osborne? What is this? What did what? Why did he do that? Who's on his bench? Tyler Lockett, Gabe Dave. Oh, Gabe Davis was out. Like, oh, Pity City was out. But there's better options than Oz. I mean, yeah. We just. I'm picking one up. There's Jarvis Landry. There's a bunch of people. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, you don't. Yeah. So I maybe he just maybe he just wanted to have fun and play a Viking. That's a lot. I guess. That, I mean, yeah. If this hadn't happened, he probably would have won. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. If Jonathan Taylor did like anything, he would have won. Nine carries. He and still he, had he had good yards. average. Yeah. And he's still averaging over five yards a carry. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway, all right. Enough of uh, enough of that. Tell us about. Uh... Oh yeah. So anyway, a group of friends and I are doing the Tomb of Annihilation. Sorry, for those who aren't familiar, this is Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Role playing game where you create a character and it's super nerdy and I don't care. Um, anyway, so this is the character I'm playing is the character I had made originally for the uh, the setup we were going to do before people's birthdays got in the way. And then we all fell, fell apart. And then nothing ever happened again, which, hey, that's fine. People's got their commitment. Um, but anyway, so I made the character. It's a arcane trickster rogue. So again, to other people who aren't familiar with this, that is a thief who can cast illusion, magic, and that sort of thing um, and have fun with it. Uh, I have created all of my uh, familiar versions because I can cast find familiar now. So I have a whole bunch of different personalities that I can play based on the familiar that I decide to uh, summon. Uh, right now I have a raven named Lenore after the Edgar Allan Poe poem. So anyway, uh, so we're going through this and I play chaotic neutral because that's the way I need to do things. Um, and the group has learned very quickly that when I say that I have a plan, something very strange is going to happen, and they probably won't be able to guess what it is. So uh, to set the stage, we are leaving the port town and going into the jungle. Now, the problem is, is that in order to leave properly, we needed to find a guide to help us 
you know, go through the jungle. So we talked to these two, uh, I believe they're tabaxi. So that's like cat things anyway. So we talked to them initially and they were going to be more, they were going to be expensive, but like probably worth it. Um, then we found a one-armed dwarf who was very cheap, mm. very cheap. And that is why we decided to go with the dwarf. Mm -hmm. And what happened there is we had to figure out, okay, what are we going to do to tell these tabaxis that we're not going to use them? Because they're probably going to be bad. And there's a couple of them. And the cleric is like, well, I don't want to deal with it. And so the paladin, because the paladin's like, you know, the de facto leader of the group. It's like, yeah. well, I, I can talk to him. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I have a plan in place. And I think at first they thought I was joking, but I was not because I said, no, no, guys, I got this. You go off and find the dwarf because we saw the, the tabaxi. So I was like, I'm going to go talk to these guys. So when the rest of the party kind of get a room away a little bit, I cast Disguise Self on myself. And basically the DM is like, okay, so what are you, what do you look like? And I said, I make myself look identical to the cleric. And that got the exact reaction I was hoping to to have because they all kind of like collectively were like, wait, what? Uh, especially the cleric character. Now, um, I had to use sneak to get away from like the party without them noticing me. Um, and I had to, I ended up having to use inspiration on it because I was worried about them seeing me. And I was like, I really want this to go off without a hitch. And so I can't see me going into it. So they they're going their own way i've made myself look like the cleric i also had taken my sword out um just in case i needed to counter ambush if the discussion i was about to have went poorly which i made look like a cleric holy symbol so that it didn't resemble a sword and i had my familiar fly around back behind the tabaxi just again in case i needed to counter ambush so I get to these tabaxi and the DM is like, well, you're going to have to do a voice. I'm like, oh, don't worry. I plan for this as well. Uh, so what I didn't tell them is that I had watched some clips of the nanny the night before so that I could kind of maybe hone up my Fran Drescher impersonation, which isn't good. Um, I'll probably do that next week just because I'm in the hotel and I don't want to be super loud. Um, so next week I'll crack it. I'll show that out. But anyway, so long story short, I am. Oh, and I should say, because the cleric uh, is from like the, the person who's playing the cleric is from New York, which is why that made a lot more sense. Okay. Uh, I said that in the first place. So I do that and I end up like promising some stuff to these tabaxi uh, when we get back, which is going to be interesting because it's like, okay, the cleric doesn't know that I did this. So I promised some stuff to these tabaxi that the cleric will have to figure out. But it's like, that's a problem for later. And if we do make it back, I'm sure we'll have plenty of money to do whatever we need to with it. Um, and at that point, basically, I have to roll a persuasion, which I did flawlessly. Uh, I believe I rolled an 18 uh, or 19. Yeah, 19 um, plus my modifier. So it was like a 20. So it was like perfect. Worked out flawlessly. Started on my way back. Um, ducked down to kind of like drop the disguise self spell went back up afterwards. Now the problem is, is that I had to do another stealth check and I rolled lower than the passive perception of the cleric. So the cleric knows something happened and something was weird 
Um, luckily for me, she had been having some drinks the night before. So it was kind of like wondering if it was still kind of like from the drink and all that. But anyway, so the cleric knows something weird happened. I haven't said anything else about it because when they asked, like the rest of the team asked, like, oh, how'd it go? I'm like, oh, it just went, went perfectly. They were very understanding, got everything taken care of. Oh, let's go. Um, so just long for clarity, short. when your DM does this, is everyone listening or do you do it just without them listening? So they actually don't know. Oh, no, like no, the no. They do know, okay. but we, the DM, have all of them mute their mics. So, like, I, don't know what they would have I don't know if they said anything or what they would have said but they could hear they could hear me all their characters definitely couldn't and they couldn't do anything to interact with the situation it was just me and the DM at that point got it I was just curious because there's two different ways to DM that at first he was going to um, have them like mute and like basically um, turn off their, their volume as well so that they couldn't hear but I think everyone kind of wanted to see what like the voice I was going to use yeah. um, and how I was going to try to sound like the cleric which I didn't try to sound like the cleric whatsoever um, but I figured that would be the most fun way to do it and now we're uh, we're into the jungle and we'll see how it goes and yeah, so far, oh yeah, and then um, on a previous one, I had lifted a jewel from the Zentarim uh, who are trying to pay pay off a Oh a yeah, you told me like, about this, yeah. To, yeah, to like divine, and I stole that. Then we actually ran into the Zentarim, a different group of Zentarim, and we got rid of them. I hit the, like, the, the captain with like a couple crossbow bolts, and then he got finished off the paladin. I checked the body before anyone else did and found like a, an emblem of like some kind of Zentar rank. So my thought is that I'll probably use prestidigitation like to make it look like I had obscured a Zentar tattoo uh, on, on my character and use that to try to like bluff my way through if we come across the Zentar again, because I think it'd be fun to try to pretend to be Zentar um, we'll see if that works. I don't know, but it'll be now, worth it. Yet. Have you guys actually fought anything yet? Yes, we okay. fought some pirates on the way in. We've fought the Zentarim a couple different times. Um, I'm forgetting something else. Oh, oh we fought later. Apparently, in like Shulk, there's like dinosaurs and stuff. Okay. So we ended up like coming across like uh like a triceratops that was kind of running loose in the city of as, as one does Anzaru. Okay. I was just curious because I know when you described this character to me during our session, you're like, yeah, I'm not really a fighter. I'm more of a troublemaker. Yeah, that's pretty much the way it goes. Basically I've been kind of hanging back and just uh being a menace with a crossbow and not really doing too much during the actual fights. Although if I'm, if I'm fighting against something that is already engaged by a friendly unit, then I get my sneak attack bonus, yeah, yeah. which does a lot of damage, like it's basically like double my damage. normal damage. So yeah. um, that at least makes me like a little more realistic Although I'm about to take like three levels in wizard, which is going to like completely. Didn't you just tell me, don't you always tell me that if you want to go more than one class, you're just going to be bad at everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good, good, but, good, good. but what I really want to do with this character is be able to cast a whole bunch of ridiculous spells um, to help him steal things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and I think that's going to work out very well because um, I've already been going through and getting stuff like acid bubble to help me like break through windows and without actually breaking windows and getting into locks and like using the familiar to help steal things and just a whole bunch of things that I'm like illusions that I want to play off. Um, I'm especially just... with this guy's self. 
I'm just excited for when you finally steal something like really important and mm -hmm. valuable and blows up everything. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, I've pretty much yeah, the only thing I've taken so far is like the ruby, which uh I ended up appraising that myself because I lifted it off the Zentarum and the DM was like, Oh, you could go to the jewelers area to get it appraised. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And then we went to the jewelers area and one of the like the jewel people that we were trying to get or jewel merchants that we were trying to get information from was like well if you could buy something or if you had something to appraise i'm like no i don't have anything to appraise no 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 nothing nothing like that but i'm getting you know what gonna be good, good. No. it's fine um so i don't know if he had planned on trying to have like the zentarum be more involved but now that i've got that zentarum emblem it might be a little easier for me to play off that ruby now so we'll see how that goes i don't know that's amazing well i look forward to see how your uh adventure with the one-armed dwarf goes and i mean how how could it go poorly <laughs> when I mean, we've been going through the gym you could use disguise so self to be the dwarf with both arms and be like why wow, you'd be way more helpful if you were like this that would be good mm -hmm. <laughs> I did think about like disguising self, like you were saying, and and pre pretending to be him. I have. I think I'm gonna wait until he's like super drunk, and then do that, and <laughs> see how that goes. Um, but also, like we've gone a few like because like the way the map is set up for like the jungle and like the exploration is like through hexes. And so far, like, we've gone the right direction each time. And, like, the DM has kind of sounded surprised that we go in the right direction. And I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or just, like, actively trying to mess with us. But, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm excited. Well, this is one of our longer episodes, but I think it was a good one. So Yeah, and I am ready for bed, so... Good luck yeah. on your waiver wire stuff. Thank and you. we will see you next week. All right. We'll see you at the next late shift. As Yay. The late shift say, Which has already had Sarah. more episodes than either of us ever expected. Yeah. So everybody return from whence you came and uh, Mooney and Nara. What was the one you came up with? Uh, I think I said darn Don't. it. Darn it, Mooney. Yeah. Darn it, Mooney. You're already ruining this outro. So, bye. Good job. Bye.